I was more excited to install this app on my iPhone than basically anything in recent memory. But it's not because of why you might think. So I love productivity apps, I love to-do list apps and task managers and all that good stuff. And that's what this is. This is an app called To Don't. It is a to-do list app that is very basic that just lets you create to-dos or to-don'ts and mark them as complete or not complete. It's kind of weird, it's kind of fun. It's really more of a fun app than a actual like hardcore productivity app. And if you're using something like Things or Todoist or Apple Reminders today, I don't think you need to switch to this. This isn't one of those videos. But I do think this app is exciting because of, again, how it was made. So every app on your iPhone right now, go ahead and look at the home screen, look at the app library. Every single one of those apps was developed in Xcode on a Mac, but not to don't. To don't was developed on an iPad and not just like a little bit of it on an iPad and then you exported to the Mac and actually did all the hard work there. It was 100% developed on an iPad. And that is in my book, really, really exciting. See, as long as the iPad has existed, there's been an argument, there's been this debate. Is an iPad a computer? Is it a real computer, right? What's a computer? And I made a video even just last month about is the iPad less exciting than it used to be? And one of the things that a lot of people brought up was a lack of pro applications, pro workflows that just weren't possible on the iPad that still are on the Mac. And one of those is development. And up until literally like this version of Swift Playgrounds that's in beta right now, and I think should release pretty soon to everyone, you weren't able to develop apps that ran on the iPad on the iPad. And for a lot of people, that is a, that's basically the end of the conversation. That means the iPad is not a real computer. It's more of an accessory device because you can't write software for itself on itself. And so now with Swift Playgrounds, I think it's version four, you're going to be able to write full applications for the iPad on the iPad. And that is huge. Again, it's not a, I'm going to write some of it on the iPad and then I'm going to actually do um, kind of like the publishing. I'm going to do the actual like hard code stuff on the Mac. No, it's entirely done in Swift Playgrounds. It is limited. There's definitely some stuff uh, that's limited. Uh, the developer actually did a really great Twitter thread. They also did a blog post kind of explaining how this process works. Um, I'll put links to all that in the description so you can check it out. But it's definitely limited. They couldn't do widgets. There's some cloud kit syncing stuff they can't do. Like there's limitations to how this all works, but they also found things they really enjoyed about the process that was different from the general developer experience on the Mac. So there's definitely pros and cons, more limits I'd say than advantages right now. Um, and if you're a like a professional shop who's making apps that are used by like hundreds of thousands, millions of people, you're probably not gonna be doing it in Swift Playgrounds anytime soon. But the fact that this has been shipped or is shipping and is going to make it, uh, make it so that anyone with an iPad can develop apps for the iPad and iPhone, I think that's a really big inflection point in the iPad's history. So when Apple originally announced the iPad, they announced it as kind of this third device, this middle device in between your phone and your PC. And it was gonna kind of live between the two. It wasn't gonna replace either of them, but it was gonna kind of be this just new device in your life. I think for a lot of people, it is still that, but for a lot of other people, it has replaced their PC or it's something they prefer to use to their PC and they'd love to do more on it. And so stuff like this just really gets me excited because it shows the iPad growing. And obviously developers are a really small niche in the world in general, but I think it's an important thing. It's an important thing for you to be able to develop apps on any computer in your life. And I think the iPad is absolutely a computer that should be able to do this. And I'm really excited to see Swift Playgrounds do it. I'd love to see Apple bring more of their pro apps to the iPad. I'd love to see Final Cut Pro. Selfishly, as a video editor, I'd love to see Final Cut Pro on the iPad. But yeah, I think Apple is doing the right thing here in making it possible to, even in a basic way, in a way that doesn't have all the functionality, all the features you get on the Mac yet, being able to publish apps from the iPad for other iPad users is a huge step forward and I'm really excited to see where it goes from here. So that's it today. Again, the app is called To Don't. I'll put links to everything, uh, to the App Store, to the developers' posts and tweets about this uh, down below so you can check those out. But yeah, cool application, more cool for how it was made than what it actually does, but you should totally check it out, uh, check out what they did with it and see if you can learn something from it. And maybe uh, when Swift Playgrounds 4 is available for everyone, uh, you can try your hand at it as well. So that's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.